Hi guys, my name is Adrian Santos and today I'm going to be talking about deployment plans. I'm going to talk about how to create a deployment plan, publishing artifacts, pulling down artifacts, and returning the life cycle. So, the first part we're going to take a look at is the building and publishing of the artifacts. So as you can see, we have two publish artifact uh, plans right here. The publish artifacts for effort and the publish for VPS API. Let's go ahead and take a look at the publish artifacts for effort. So if I go ahead and I edit the plan, um, as you can see, we have two stages, a checkout and a publish. If we take a look at the checkout source code, all it's really doing is just checking out Effort Web API when develop and mass or master uh, get uh, triggered. The only way that they get triggered is by a pull request being ex uh, merged into uh, either develop or master. This is of course designed by um, by our branching strategy, which you can also take a look at um, so you can understand a little more of how that works. But essentially, um, once you check out the source code, you then go ahead into the Publish Web API and the Publish Web App uh, stages. The Publish Web API um, has uh, three uh, tasks, the source code checkout, as well as this command build which all this does is that it builds the web API. As you can see, this is the working directory, and it's just running a .NET build with configuration for release. Then the publish command uh, publishes the, uh, the project using the .NET publish with configuration of release on the same working directory effort slash web API. So after this is done, then the artifacts get published um, with uh, and the, the files are grabbed from this location, uh, which is the build path. Um, pretty much all the files in here are copied into this web API um, artifact. And similarly, publish web app does exactly the same thing. As you can see, uh, the artifacts get copied into this web app artifacts, and the tasks are exactly the same, the only difference being the working subdirectory. Alright, so the next part of this is the actual pulling of the artifacts down and putting them in the correct location, which will then deploy them. Um, so if we head on over to the deploy and all deployment projects, as you can see, we have two. One is the uh, deployment pro uh, project for VPS API. As you can see, there are three instances of both pre-production and production uh, servers, um, so six in total. And then we also have the deployment plan for effort web app and web api so as you can see we have uh staging and production the only difference between the two is that staging gets triggered when develop uh is merged and production gets triggered when master is merged so let's go ahead and head on over to staging and the first thing i want to take a look at is the edit build plan so when you press create uh and you want to create a deployment project this is the first screen we're going to get to where you're going to have to be able to put a name um, and then a build plan. So as you can see, the build plan that triggers this deployment plan to uh, to go off is whenever the published artifacts uh, successfully built, successfully finishes. So when this successfully finishes, then this deployment plan gets triggered, and this one is using the uh, the develop branch. What that I want to show is the actual uh, deployment process. So if we go ahead and hit on the edit tasks button, as you can see, we have five uh, tasks in total. The first one being uh, to stop the actual website. Uh, and if you've already accessed VPS zero, you'll understand what this means. This is the website in IIS that, um, that we bring down essentially. And then we start up the offline website. Next section is to just clean the working directory and then here is where we actually remove the current site that's uh, online. So we remove all the items inside in a pub www root slash efforts. And of course, as you know, if you head on to the effort site, um, this is the uh, the base URL to to go off. So then after here, we actually then download the web app artifacts into that same folder and the API artifacts into this folder right here. Lastly, we just stop the offline site and restart the default website. 
And that's pretty much um, the deployment process. It's fairly straightforward. It's not so hard. Um, there's other environment settings that we have, uh, one of them being triggers. And the trigger is uh, that this deployment plan gets triggered when the develop branch uh, finishes to kind of uh, show the difference. The production one, the trigger is not undeveloped, but it's actually using master. And then we go back. Um, some other things are, so for example, since this is going to the pre-production server, which is VPS0, the agent assignment is actually the pre-prod server agent, whereas the production environment uses VPS1 production server. And then the uh, notifications, those are emails that are sent out whenever uh, pro either production uh, starts or it finishes. Lastly, I wanted to kind of bring everything together and show how it's working on VPS0. So this is actually uh, VPS0. And as you see, this is the IIS manager. And here we see the default website. There's a couple of things here, um, such as uh, VPS prod and VPS pre prod. Those are the VPS APIs. So if you go to a website, for example, um, localhost, VPS preprod. This is the actual VPS uh, API. If you head on over to a VPS effort, then you would reach um, the uh, effort site. And that is designed um, to be the, uh, the name here. So anything slash, so the localhost slash effort, localhost slash effort FTP, if we go there, we can see the files are inside of this folder. And this is of course um, accessible from the live site, uh, sbrog-effort-cis.fie.edu. You can do the same thing and you'll be able to see it. So what ends up happening with the deployment server is that it'll bring this site down. Um, so you can see, you can do that here as well, stop. It'll erase all the contents inside of effort as you can see, there's a bunch of folders. There's the API folder as well as all the other files, and we can actually explore and see pretty much everything. Which is what get what this is what gets uh, created when you publish a .NET uh, project. So all of those files are copied into this folder. The API files are copied into the API folder, and the default website is restarted, and it's pretty much good to go from there.